This is Franco, and it's time for another update on the WorkBee CNC router with powered by the Centroid Acorn CNC control system and the Technic ClearPath servos. So the machine's not done, but it's almost done. And uh, I kind of have it rigged up here a little bit. I was taking some test cuts with it last night. It worked pretty good. But uh, what I wanted to talk about quickly is uh, auto homing, auto squaring. So I have that working. The machine is set up in the Acorn or the CNC12 software is configured. It auto homes and auto squares using these limit switches. I also have it set up where the uh, the router and the shop vac are running off the relays here out of the electrical enclosure. And I'll show you that here quickly as well. Uh, first things first, I guess we'll do the the homing squaring routine. I'm not going to really uh, get into like the how to how to set it up because I'll tell you why I'm not going to get into that because the uh, centroid documentation is really good. Their wiring diagrams are great. I used those pretty extensively while I was wiring up the cabinet. And their instructions on how to set up auto homing and auto squaring are, are very good, very detailed. If you follow these directions, you can't go wrong. They tell you exactly what to do. And what's nice, something that I really like, is if... Uh, you can't remember where to find them, all you have to do is go to the, the wizard and there's actually a hyperlink in the wizard that will uh, take you to the directions. It's actually right here under the access pairing uh, screen. You click this hyperlink, I'm going to close this, it'll take you out to this PDF file and it will pretty much walk you through the whole process of setting up uh, access pairing and squaring. And the procedure I used is found on pages 7 through 10. And that's under the section Auto Homing and Auto Squaring with Software Axis Motor Pairing. So there's a couple of different ways you can pair axes and, and configure the machine. This, this is the way I did it. But read the instructions, they'll tell you what to do. They're well written. They're really helpful. Can't can't say enough good things about them. All right, back to the machine. So what I'm going to do? I just powered it up, so I have to I have to press reset just to do the safety thing here. The reset button works. Normally, I I actually will hit the the mushroom switch on my machine. You know, normally I'll hit this just to verify that's working because. This is probably where I'll be standing if I have a, uh, a crisis moment here while the machine's operating. So anyway, it's reset, and now it's ready to home the machine. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to stand here and show you the, uh, the, the control while I'm doing this, but what I will say is uh, something that's really cool. As it's going through the whole homing and auto-squaring routine, messages pop up on the screen and it, it tells you what it's doing step by step. So that's really helpful, especially in the beginning when you're, you're doing this for the first time and you're not sure what's happening. It tells you, you know, homing Z, Z homed, homing X, X homed, moving Y axis, pairing Y axis, decoupling Y axis, uh, homing master Y axis, homing slave Y axis. It, Lots of feedback, which is good, and uh, gives you confidence while you're working through that process. So, you know, oh, I have a visitor. Hey there, Winston, what are you doing? Came out to see me. You think there's food in this refrigerator. There's not. Joke's on you. Okay, here we go. So I have my, my wireless pendant, which is magnetically hanging on to my wrench and I'm going to cycle start and show you the homing routine so here we go so the first thing it will do is home the z-axis then it's going to home the x-axis
Then it's going to move both y-axes together. Try to get both of them. There we go. So it moves them both together. This is my slave axis. It hits the slave switch first. Backs off, then it, it, I believe it, uh, at some point here, it decouples the axes, then it, it does the master y-axis. Then it does some stuff, it's thinking, it's calculating. Yep, it's all done. So that's pretty much it. it it's, uh, you know, when it's working great, it's actually not very spectacular, but uh, that's good because I don't want anything really spectacular to happen when my machine is home and I just want it to work. And that's what it did. So my machine now is homed out and the axes are squared up and it is ready to cut. And like I said, the wizard is really nice. This is, I'm not gonna make this a how-to video, but the directions in the wizard are really easy to follow. And, um, you know, the, the settings where you actually, you know, uh, compensate for squaring your machine, they're, they're really easy to find, they're well labeled. And uh, after, uh, you know, a few minutes, you can, you can get all those settings dialed in and have your machine uh, square itself and, and be really true. So that's cool. I like that. Uh, other things that I have wired up, uh, like I said, I have the spindle working. So if I put my spindle into manual mode, I can actually turn my router on right from the pendant. I'm sure you can hear that. The router is on. Oh. And put that back in automatic mode. Now, I, I guess I could map the coolant or the dust collection system uh, to a macro. I just haven't got that far yet. The vacuum system, I have programmed to use the M8 command. So when I click this button, right there, you probably can hear it. Stop that. So that's working great. I actually used the same post processor uh, for this router as I was using for my milling machine. I used the exact same post and it's, it's working fine, which uh, I like that because it makes my life pretty simple. I don't have to keep, I don't have to support two different post processors, one for the mill and one for the router. The same post processor works for both machines and that's cool. So as far as wiring that up, show you the cabinet here it's a little bit of a mess in there but that's okay so there is the centroid acorn board and there is the eight relay board that now ships with all the centroid acorns I really like this configuration I think this was uh, this was a really really smart move on their part so now the, you have actual, you know, eight outputs that are all uh, relay, you know, relay outputs. And re I don't know, you know, if you're, relays are easy to work with. If you're not an electrical engineer or you're not an electronics guy, it's pretty easy to figure out how to wire things up into a relay. And the good thing is, is if you uh, make a mistake, which, you know, happens, uh, the relay board's relatively inexpensive to replace where, you know, if the relays were soldered right onto the acorn board and you damage them, well, now you've, you know, you've damaged the, you know, the heart of your CNC machine. So I like having the relay board be a separate, uh, a separate board. And it's super easy to hook up. There's just a ribbon cable that goes from the relay board to the acorn. And the centroid people put these nice, uh, these nice green connectors. So they actually pop off, you know, you can pop those off screw down your terminals and then plug them back into the relay. 
if, if for some reason you have to swap out a relay board, you don't really have to mess up your wiring. You can just unplug things and plug them back in. It works really good. But let me just uh, trigger the, uh, the spindle here a few times. Let's see here. My relay to the spindle. I like how they have all these indicator lights uh, built onto their boards now. It makes it really nice when you're wiring up your machine and you're trying to figure out what it's doing. You can sit here and actually see the lights change color. Uh, that's a nice thing. So yeah, simple. Um, you know, I have the, the main power here at the top of my cabinet and uh, these are my two wires here. These two lines that go back and power the router and power the uh, shop vac. Basically all I do is I, I have the common white wire going to the white wire and then the hot wire I just I bring you know the main power to the uh, common side of the relay and then the normally open side of the relay is is wired out to the, the line that's going to the router or the uh, shop vac and that works really good so when the relay's off, the router's off. Let's see if I can turn this on. When the relay's on, the router's on. Relay's off, the router's off. And there's uh, indicator LEDs on the relay board and also on the acorn. I forgot to mention that. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, yeah, so I guess that's enough of an update. So the router is coming along. It is almost done. And um, I think the next thing I'm going to do is I used double sided tape when I uh, did my test cut. And just never mind this over here. I had a little little situation I um, actually I guess I didn't have my bit or my collet tightened up good enough and my cutter slid out of my collet and cut into my table so we'll we'll deal with that later that was my fault but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use these things and recess these things down into the uh, spoil board that way I'll have a place to uh, put my M6 fasteners to to hold things down so that'll probably be the next thing that I do. All right. Well, there you go. There's the update. Thanks for watching. And be safe.